Good morning. John, chapter 5. Jesus says in this chapter that the things you've trusted in for generations to make you right with God just won't cut it on Judgment Day. The Jews were trusting in the law of Moses and patting themselves on the back and praising each other and feeling <clears throat> pretty good about the fact that they could keep the law. They even searched the scriptures diligently. But when Jesus came, they rejected Jesus. All the scriptures pointed to him. The miracles he did gave testimony to him. God had sent John the Baptist to speak to them about repentance so their hearts would be prepared. But their hearts were hardened. When Jesus claimed to be God, they just thought, let's kill him. They were totally against him. He messed up their comfortable religious system. Why he healed on the Sabbath? They weren't even excited that someone was healed and mercy was shown to someone in suffering. Our God is a God of mercy and he reaches out through Jesus to speak to us and to warn us. Jesus is the one who has the power of judgment and he tells the Jews in this chapter, there will be a day coming when judgment comes and this physical body that goes into the grave and turns to dust will rise again and those who have done good will rise to life. And those who have done evil will rise to condemnation. And the Jews might have thought, well, I guess I'll do all right because I'm following the rules that I'm comfortable with and my whole family is followed. And instead he says, what does it mean to do good? What does it mean to do the good that leads to life? And he goes on to explain, it's to receive Jesus not just follow a set of laws. Those laws spoke of Jesus. Moses in the Old Testament, God had given him the system of a sacrifice that would cover and pay the price for sins. The law just showed us how far short we fall of the holiness of God. And then a sacrifice was offered by a priest and Jesus would come and he would be the once for all sacrifice. He would be the high priest that we could come to that makes our way open to God. Let's trust him. Let's not let our religious system and our religious habits get in the way of seeing Jesus and the life he offers. John chapter five. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for a feast of the Jews. Now there is in Jerusalem near the sheep gate, a pool which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, Do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. The day on which this took place was a Sabbath. And so the Jews said to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath. The law forbids you to carry your mat. But he replied, The man who made me well said to me, Pick up your mat and walk. So they asked him, Who is this fellow who told you to pick it up and walk? The man who was healed had no idea who it was, for Jesus had slipped away into the crowd that was there. Later, Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, See, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. So because Jesus was doing these things on the Sabbath, the Jews persecuted him. Jesus said to them, My father is always at his work to this very day, and I too am working. For this reason, the Jews tried all the harder to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. Jesus gave them this answer. I tell you the truth. 
the son can do nothing by himself. He can only do what he sees his father doing, because whatever the father does, the son also does. For the father loves the son and shows him all he does. Yes, to your amazement, he will show him even greater things than these. For just as the father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the son gives life to whom he is pleased to give it. Moreover, the father judges no one, but has entrusted all judgment to the son, that all may honor the son, just as they honor the father. He who does not honor the son does not honor the father who sent him. I tell you the truth. Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. I tell you the truth. A time is coming and has now come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself and he has given him authority to judge, because he is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed at this, for a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done good will rise to live, and those who have done evil will rise to be condemned. By myself I can do nothing. I judge only as I hear, and my judgment is just. For I seek not to please myself, but him who sent me. If I testify about myself, my testimony is not valid. There is another who testifies in my favor, and I know that his testimony about me is valid. You have sent to John, and he has testified to the truth. Not that I accept human testimony, but I mention it, that you may be saved. John was a lamp that burned and gave light and you chose for a time to enjoy his light. I have testimony weightier than that of John, for the very work that the Father has given me to finish, and which I am doing, testifies that the Father has sent me, and the Father who sent me has himself testified concerning me. You have never heard his voice, nor seen his form, nor does his word dwell in you, for you do not believe the one he sent. You diligently study the scriptures because you think that by them you possess eternal life. These are the scriptures that testify about me, yet you refuse to come to me to have life. I do not accept praise from men, but I know you. I know that you do not have the love of God in your hearts. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. But if someone else comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe if you accept praise from one another, yet make no effort to obtain the praise that comes from the only God? But do not think I will accuse you before the Father. Your accuser is Moses, on whom your hopes are set. If you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But since you do not believe what he wrote, how are you going to believe what I say?